This lab is the single beam reflection hologram. Uh, making holograms is something students really enjoy doing, uh, but it takes quite a bit of practice to get it right. Uh, the single biggest problem is vibrations, so uh, it's very important that everything be bolted down and uh, that people stand away from the setup and hold their breath while the um, hologram is being made. The exposure time will be somewhere between 8 and 10 seconds, and this is another thing that can be determined by uh, experimentation. The first thing that needs to be done is that the chemicals need to be mixed. So you begin by purchasing the holography supplies. These came from Integraph, and I believe the website is listed in the lab right up. Uh, this is the holography processing kit. This is a JD4 kit. It's the easiest to use and probably the least toxic of the kits available. And these are the small film plates which are um, like this, two and a half inches squared. The, um, the chemical kit contains uh, prepackaged chemicals plus all of the instructions required to mix them. Uh, you do need distilled water, slightly warmed, so um, it's good to have a heating pot or a microwave on hand to, to warm the water before the chemicals are mixed. It's very important that you pay attention to local um, chemical storage and disposal rules. Um, the, the MSDS sheets are available from the manufacturer of the chemicals. Um, the chemicals need to be stored in nice, tight, well-labeled bottles. Uh, if necessary, the spent chemicals need to be stored in hazardous waste bottles. So this is all um, information that you need to have on hand before you begin, and probably the local chemistry department can help you with that. Once the chemicals are mixed, uh, there's a developer which has two parts solution uh, A and solution B, and then a bleach. Um, the next step, uh, just before the holograms are made, is to lay out developing trays and rinsing basins. Uh, we are not in this uh, location allowed to let the rinse water go down the drain, so we have to collect the rinse water and store it in bottles for later disposal. Uh, the first tray will hold the um, developing solution. It's mixed uh, one part solution A to one part solution B. It lasts for um, six to eight hours, so typically you mix it just before you're going to make the exposures. Then there is um, a bowl of rinse water, um, a tray of bleach, and a final bowl for rinsing the uh, completed holograms. In order to make the hologram, you need a laser, and we'll use the laser from the kit, which is a low power uh, helium neon laser. And you need something to spread the beam so that it completely covers the object. And you need ways to mount all of these components. So here are a couple of suggested ways. You could use the microscope objective to expand the beam. Um, it's a little awkward, and the, uh, the beam that results is kind of modeled. So I prefer to use the small uh, converging mirror. Since this is red sensitive film, the uh, safe light for this kind of holography is a green light, so this is a fairly good uh, safe light. It's um, kept under the table, pointing away from the table. It doesn't need to be absolutely pitch black in the room, but it needs to be, um, as they usually say, too dark to read. So if you have a light like this, you certainly aren't going to put it so it's facing the table, you're going to keep it away. Uh, you can also use uh, small night lights, the ones that glow with a kind of greenish glow. And in this room, we also have um, glow-in-the-dark stars so that we don't bump into the walls while we're walking around. With the curved mirror mounted so that the object is illuminated, what we'll do in the dark is to place the film plate into the film holder so that the emulsion side is facing the object, uh, and the object is in contact with the emulsion. This way, if the object moves, the film plate moves, they move together. Uh, this particular kind of uh, arrangement is um, only going to work in a very, very low vibration environment. Um, there's um, a lot of chance with the raised laser and the raised mirror and the raised object and the that, that something is going to vibrate. So this is only recommended if you have um, a heavy table or, or uh, you're doing this in the middle of the night and there's no traffic around. 
uh, what you'd use to hold the, uh, the object in place, um, whatever you have. If you have a jack stand, right now I have this just on a, um, an upside down um, post, a post holder with a base and he's standing on the base. Um, if I were actually going to do the hologram this way, I would certainly um, make sure that this is attached firmly to the table. And the exposure is made by exposing the beam. What do you use for a shutter? Well, how about a box? A lightweight box, because just the act of lifting it is going to cause some vibration to the setup. So the way we're going to make the exposure is we're going to lift the box, count to 10, then make the exposure. And then it's done. In order to tell which side is the emulsion side, wet a finger and just touch it, and the emulsion side will feel sticky. Be sure you touch it just in the corner, or you're going to have a fingerprint in the middle of your hologram. Once the laser, the mirror, and the object are aligned, turn off the lights and check the exposure again with a piece of um, exposed film plate or a piece of glass. Uh, if this is your very first hologram, you'll just have to kind of eyeball it and hope that it works. Um, block the laser beam. Our shutter in this case is a, a, an empty carton. Uh, whatever completely blocks the, the uh, laser beam is, is fine. Um, and in the dark, the film plate will be placed into the film plate holder, emulsion side facing the object. Lift the box for a few seconds to allow the vibrations to die out. This also allows the emulsion to settle, the object to settle. Be patient. And when it's time to make the exposure, try eight seconds to start. Uh, if that hologram doesn't work and you're reasonably sure that there were no vibrations, um, try uh, adding or subtracting 50% of the time. But usually, the most common cause of the hologram not working at all was vibration somewhere in the system. One of the challenges of making a hologram is getting the film plate out of the box. Uh, the box has latches on, on either end, and uh, it's fairly easy to open, a little more difficult to close. Once you've removed a film plate, and you've determined which side is the emulsion side, if you can remember which way the plates went into the box, you can then mark the box and you'll always know which side is the emulsion side. Uh, once you've removed the film plate, before you do anything else, be sure the box is closed and sealed. Um, we usually make sure we put them in a drawer before we go on. With the thinner optical breadboard that you have from your photon kit, here's a way that might work a little bit better. Uh, it has a lot more stability. And that is, instead of having the plate in the air and the object uh, up on a stand, take three of the long cap screws from the uh, photon kit and put them into the, into the breadboard uh, to form a sort of tripod. Then the holography plate will just rest on top. And that's a very stable and secure way of doing it. Now, in that, this case, you want to use an object that's somewhat smaller. For example, keys or coins, something that will slip in underneath. Uh, we've had very good success doing it this way. How do you get the beam down to that plate? Well, all you need to do, really, is steer it with this concave mirror. Again, the same concave mirror that you used before. In this case, we put the film plate with the emulsion side down. Again, the best results are obtained when the object is close to the, uh, to, the, to the film plate. So if it's a small flat object, like this coin, you can raise it up on something like a rubber stopper or something solid. Uh, it's not good to use a handful of felt or, or something that's going to be uh, deformable. We definitely want a solid base so there'll be uh, no vibrations. Again, we follow the same procedure. Um, we put the plate on, emulsion side down, uh, give it several seconds, uh, 30 seconds, so that the emulsion settles into place. Lift the, the shutter, whatever it is you're using for a shutter, hold it in place for a while, 
to um, how long is a while? 10, 15, 20 seconds, so that all vibrations die down. Make sure no one is leaning on the table or tapping their fingers on the table. Don't let them walk around the room. Keep everybody still, and then do the eight second exposure. And the hologram is taken. The first step is development. This is done with the light still off. So if this had developer in it, we put it emulsion side up. Uh, give it maybe 10, 15 seconds, um, and, um, and then it goes into the rinse. It's very important to be wearing rubber gloves um, or to use tongs. The problem with the tongs is that if they slip, they'll, they'll um, damage the emulsion. So it's much better to have rubber, rubber gloves. So we do 10, 15 seconds. Um, at that point, the hologram should be very, very dark, uh, black like a pair of sunglasses. Uh, it goes into the rinse for 20-30 um, seconds and then into the bleach and just swish it around and um, in the very dim light of the safe light you'll see that it becomes clear. The finished hologram will in fact look like this. At that point you can turn the room lights on and give it another 30 seconds rinse or so. And the final step is to dry. Um, you can give it um, a little photo flow rinse if you want to prevent spotting but um, uh, that step isn't necessary. And then you can dry it in the air. Uh, how long that takes will depend on the weather. Or you could actually use a, a dryer, like a small hair dryer. Um, this particular emulsion dry, uh, develops very hard so that it won't be harmed by the application of heat. And usually students are very anxious to see if their holograms work. So that's a, a good alternative is just to use a hair dryer, keep it a good distance away. Uh, if you can hold it comfortably, then the emulsion isn't being harmed. If you purchase the developing chemicals in the film from Intergraph, these instructions are summarized with the directions for mixing the chemicals. Um, and uh, the, the website of uh, Intergraph, uh, as well as holoworld.com, gives a lot more hints for making successful holograms in the classroom.